Hey coach, so glad you found us. Couple things. First of all, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We love the, those, pe those people that subscribe. That's the first thing. Second thing is go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Let me help you win more games, less time, 30 plus years of coaching. Come join our community. It is unbelievable. There's nothing else like it. 14 day for trial. It's the only place you'll find that on the web. Let us help you become better basketball coaches. All right, let's head off to the, to the video. All right, welcome to the Basketball Leadership Podcast. This is, an, I, I told Coach before we jumped on, I'm pretty excited about this one. I think, actually, this is maybe one of my secret sauces, because I think we're we're pretty good in a school of 2,300, and, you know, um, to, to, it's, it's not only hard to make the team, but then to find that specific role within the team is a, it's a pretty difficult thing. Um, so we're going to talk about defining roles. So coach, what's, what's your thought on, on defining roles? <laughs> the first thing I'll say is I don't know if there's anything more important for a coach to do than define, defining the roles of the players on the team. I think, I mean, I, I see it so much in the, in the teams we play and you can tell well coached teams based on, uh, the defined roles that those players have and you can see co uh, teams that are not well coached and it, it pretty much you can start with shot selection um shot selection is a good way to determine if roles are defined on teams um but it i i just think and i don't have a lot of secrets with this i just think communication is so important um coach and us as coaches we have got to sit down with players and we have to clearly define what a good shot is for you what a poor shot is for you. What, what I use the phrase all the time with our kids, be great at what you're good at. Be great at what you're good at over and over and over again. And if you're a great screener, be the best screener on our team. If, if your job is to uh, rebound, play defense and hit some bunnies inside, that's your job. If you start doing things that you're not good at, we all know what happens. When you start doing something you're not good at on the court, you stick out like a sore thumb and you sit next to us because you're making mistakes. It's those <laughs> kids that know what they're good at and they focus on doing that to help the team um, that allow teams to have the most success. So it, it I can is. talk it, about some things we do with uh, shooting and shot selection, but in a nutshell, a, that's it's really yeah, important. It, well, that's the hard, the shooting thing is the hardest thing for them to come. I mean, coach, I think it's coach Huggins used to say, you're open for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You're open for a reason, but um, I'll just tell you kind of how we do roles and stuff. Um, and I love what you're talking about. We talk about superpowers and kryptonite, like, like we all, I have this and even in my coaching and hopefully my kryptonite, I have hired people on my staff that, my kryptonite that I'm not things I'm not good at, which I know I'm not good at. I've hired people that are good at those things. Absolutely. Yep. So, so it's a similar in this. It's like, we all have superpowers and we all have kryptonite. And so some of them, I have to explain what that means, but, um, and, uh, you know, I want the good high school programs, the good basketball programs, you hide the kryptonite and you accentuate the superpowers. Yep. Um, it doesn't matter. It's that it literally is that simple, even in the NBA. You know, Giannis is very, very good. But he has yep. a couple skill sets that aren't as good as some other ones. They try yep. to hide those. Like, you know, sometimes he gets in foul trouble. And sometimes there's things he does. He's one of the best players in the world, but he still has things that he's a good outside shooter. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's yeah. there's things that he's not is so they hide them. They try to hide them and they try to like so I think that's the thing. But the way we do it is once I pick the team, once we've had cuts and I've had to pick the team, we do roles three times in a year. Now I'm talking to kids all year long. Yep. We have three formal times. We have before the first game, usually winter break. And then right before tournament is when we do it. Now we do a postseason when I don't count that one. Cause that's for next year. I don't yep. do that with my seniors, but um, and those are courageous conversations. Those are not, those are not like, those are, here's where you are. Here's what you're good at. Here's what you need to work on. Um, and talking about leadership in the last previous couple of weeks too. Like I know last year, I, 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 you know, of all of them, I think maybe all but one were really good. They all kind of understood their role, but there was one that just, 
did not understand was trying to we were trying to put a square peg into a round hole and it was like hearing nothing i was saying and that's tough it's it's uh, from a cultural standpoint from a leadership standpoint from a team winning standpoint the kid didn't, couldn't play like you can't play at this point because you just don't understand where you fit into into kind of your roles and stuff and i i think this you know the culture piece of a program like i find it so much easier now because kids know coming up i mean they, they know what we value they know what they see us play they know what type of shots we take they know how we play um they know that they have to buy into their role you know what i mean like they just they know that if they want to get on the court, that's what they need to do. And, um, you know, one thing we do at the beginning, we've talked about our preseason self-perception form that we do a little bit that helps define it right away. You know, like if we were to have a game tomorrow, where is your role? You know, where does the team see you? Where do you see you? Where do I see you? I want to make sure all three of those align, but I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's the, you know, we definitely talk about it kind of, um, holiday-ish time definitely before the tournament again definitely before the first game you have to kind of lay it out there and say you know what we're probably going to play eight kids guys and our first guy off the bench is going to be this or you know and I I also do on my preseason form I have the kids um this is you'll like this one I have them uh tell me how many minutes they expect to play every game and how many shots they expect to take I add them all up you know, I say, well, you know, we average, uh, whatever. I don't know how many shots per game. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be taking twice as many guys. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to figure this out. You know what I mean? Um, you, you gotta, you it's gotta the do ma- those- you, you and I are both math teachers in our, like at some point it's like, I do the exact same thing. It's like, okay, so this, like we were over, we were like a hundred minutes over last. It's like, this, this can't happen. Mathematically, yeah. I can't do this. Or like <laughs> can't play eight on five. <laughs> right. And it's like, so I like the shot part. I've always just done the minute thing just to kind of get it's like, okay, here's what we have. You know, we have we play 18 minute half. So I've got 36 minutes. So yeah. um uh yeah. so it's like, but then you know, and th- and they all kind of know a couple kids should be playing like high 20s at least in ours it's like they're going to need a little rest but they're going to maybe play 30 to 36 so all of a sudden they're all fighting for it's yeah it's a it's a wonderful visual now will they all get it not necessarily but it's a great visual like i can't i can't i'm not playing 15 people for 12 minutes eat whatever it is it's like that ain't happening Um, and having these conversations with kids like right away preseason meeting they have to know exactly what is expected of them. You know, we're going to play eight guys. We have a really tough schedule. You know, I mean, in a perfect world, I think we would all say we have a, a real successful season. Uh, you maybe have a few games where, um, you know, you're going to get a, a bigger you know, victory and you can put kids in and, you know, right. but sometimes, I mean, if you have like a really competitive team and you're like, every game is a, is a battle, there's kids that aren't getting in and, they have to know that going in and know that you're going to do whatever you can to give them more PT when you can, but um, clearly defining that and communicating it often and having these one-on-one relationships are critical for a coach because it's a great quote. Um, If you don't communicate with kids on this stuff, uh, when you don't communicate at all as a coach, you get a void of communication And whenever there's a void, that void has to be filled with something. And more often than not, it's filled with negativity. It is. And so communicating and defining roles, critical. It is. And and, and to be honest, from an old dog, I'm telling you right now for the people listening, it's a lot easier sometimes for a junior to accept that than a senior. (laughs) Um, Because they might play the next year, they might develop into the next year. It's like there's it's it's a unique senior that can be the twelfth guy on the bench and never play. Um, Yeah, it just is. And I've almost to be honest, weird weird, uh, uh, thought on that, Steve is. I would say our seniors that come out their senior year, who have gone through it their junior year, tend to know it. Like they're they're willing, they know where they're going to be. 
sometimes when kids get up to the, their first year on varsity as a junior and they've played all the time, I'm... they've been in the top five on all team. And all of a sudden they're mixed with the best players in our school and they don't play that. That's hard. they accept that's it. Hard... They accept it, but it's harder for them. It is. It is. It is. And it's like, yes. And it's like, the, there's, there's differentiation there. That's hard, but again, hopefully all the way through it's, and it's hard. And to be honest with you, I think you're a hundred percent right. I think most of the time the kids get it. <laughs> um, yep. I'm thinking the people that live at the same house with them sometimes don't get it quite as well. Act but, meaning define it, say that don't sugarcoat anything. If you're a yes. young coach, you have to be honest. You have to be empathetic but you cannot sugarcoat anything. It will only get you in trouble. Right. Right. And, and, and yes, yes. And especially the young coaches, when you have these meetings, I would have one assistant, another assistant in there with you, especially early, early in your career, maybe before you build up a little street cred. Um, Good idea. <laughs> uh, just because I, I, I've told this story on coach unplugged, but, you know, I had a talk with my son junior year and when he told his mom and what I said was not the same <laughs> world. It was not the same. It was sophomore going into junior. Yeah. It was like, I came home and I was like, I, I, we called my assistant up and I said, here, and put him on speaker. I go, did I say that? No, he didn't see. He said, here's what you said. So that's my own son didn't hear yep. what I had to say. So, um, so mom needed to hear that. It's like, well, but yeah, that's cool. Like I just told him it was going to be hard. And it's like, here's what you have to do. And blah, blah, blah. And, um, he heard, I'm never going to play is what he heard. Yep. They hear what they, <laughs> they hear. It's yep. a selective, uh, selective hearing sometimes, I think. <laughs> yep. All right. Anything else with defining roles, coach? No, it's uh, just incredibly important for coaches to make sure you are having this ongoing discussion with your athletes. Awesome. That's great. All right. Till next week. Hey coach, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are hit like down below, that helps us be found everywhere. Also subscribe and then hit the little bell up above and that will help you get notified every day when we put a new basketball coaching video up every day of the year. Um, it'll help you a ton. And then uh, go over and check out teachups.com for coaches who want to get better.